five ways Facebook may be harming your Christian life. This is an article by Michael J. Uh, Kruger. Um, I won't, I'm just gonna skip and just read the top five in number. One, short attention span, limited learning style. For folks who can absorb information at the rate of a short text message or tweet, it's difficult to imagine them sitting through a 35 minute sermon and being able to engage in, sustained, in, a, in a sustained manner. Does this mean we shorten our sermons or make them more entertaining, or does this mean we have to walk out to train our congregations in the way they learn, hopefully the latter? Two, low view of authority over focus on equality. One of the most often overlooked impact of 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 social of social of the impact of social is the effect it has on the way we view authority figures. The internet is the great is the great equalizer. Everyone has a voice. Not everyone has a platform to speak their mind. Not everyone has a platform to speak their mind, say their piece. After any blog article, any news story, a person can write their own opinion and their own comments. And, and so, certainly much of this is good, but it can lead to an egalitarian view of authority that no one person's opinion should be varied or weighed, uh, weighted any more than others. This represents a problem for a biblical, ecclesiastical, logically that understands the church and the pastors have, have the real authority in the lives of its people. 3. Sovereignty Interactions Artificial Relationships uh, MIT professor Sherry Toshaw uh, uh, has recently written in a book Alone Together Why We Expect More From Technology and Less From Each Other 2001. She observes on social media sites such as Facebook we think we, we will be we think we will be presenting ourselves, but out but out of profile ends up as somebody else's, often the fancy of who we want to be. In other words, people might feel more connected, but they can really be more distant, at least from who they really are. In contrast, true Christian fellowship requires that we engage with people as we really are, so that we can honestly face our sin and grow together in Christ. For lack of physical presence, Toshaw observes again that people rarely admit they would rather leave a voicemail or send an email than talk face to face. The new technologies allow us to dial down human contact to deteriorate its nature and extent. Modern technology can create an, uh, uh, an almost non-physical, quasi-gothic experience. It's ironic that one of Christianity's earliest enemies was agnosticism. Agnostic, agnosticism which held the belief that the physical world was inherited evil and, this, and that salvation was largely a release from the physical body. In contrast, biblical Christianity has always had the robust and positive view of the physical face-to-face -face presence matters. Indeed, one day in the new heavens and new earth, we will have new resurrection bodies and we will see Christ and each other, and each other physically forever. Low Commitment account, Accountability one of the attractive features of a Facebook style communication is that it requires very little of us. It is a low commitment and low accountability type of interaction. We control entirely control the duration, intensity and level of contact. At any moment we can simply stop. But a Christian's life and a real Christian relationship don't work like this. We do have obligations to to one another. A com 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 um Convent, a convenient, uh, covenant obligations. Put differently, Christianity has the corporate aspect, cooperative aspect to it that stands directly against the trend of individualistic and self-determined re relational patterns of modern technology, technological age. So where do we go from here? Do we abandon technology of our modern world, move to the countryside and adopt an Amish-style existence? Uh, not at all. The point of this post has been to condemn modern communication is is not the the point of this post has not been to condemn modern communication technology. I'm using it this very moment. Well the point has been that we must be aware of the challenges that it creates for ministry in a modern and postmodern world. 
technology does not necessarily create sin patterns, but it exacerbates the sin patterns that are already present within our hearts and the hearts of our congregations. In response, we need to do something that we needed to do anyway, give our people a robust and vibrant picture of what the church is and their place in it. In other words, we need to give them a full or biblical ecclesiology. Thanks so much for watching this video.